Hello RC fans, Racing 393 here for a, a rather interesting video. However, I think I think a lot of people have done this already. Uh, there's surprisingly amount of videos on this, but uh, I thought I'd do my own one. Um, and as you can see before you, we've got a... I'm going to be a bit controversial here as well. But I'll start off with one of the most iconic uh, Tamiya buggies that's probably amongst other there's probably one or two really but amongst them most iconic buggy that Tamiya have released at the beginning of their timeline I'm going to start off by saying I never liked this kit ever I still don't However, it has started a lot of people up in the hobby by its very uh, nature. And the fact that it's uh, very accessible, very basic, uh, even back in the day, it wasn't expensive. But certainly opened up the doors for perhaps the biggest influx of RC enthusiasts, kids and adults alike, that has ever been. Now, I'm from an era of the SRB era, which is, I'm not going to put it up on this intro, but it's the, uh, you know, the Sand Scorcher, Rough Rider, Super Champ era. And I think that came out in, I think they were 82, weren't they, or something like that? But this came out in 84. Now, I am I still had my Sand Scorcher uh, when this came out, and I had some friends at school at the time who had one of these, and uh, his friend, uh, an associate of him who was sort of my friend um, also had a Hornet and they sort of went hand in hand as in the cars uh, and I was never impressed I thought oh, I don't like that I like the buggy I like the Rough Rider I could never afford a Rough Rider back in the day I couldn't afford a Sand Scorcher my, uh, my parents bought that for me and I it was that or the Ford Ranger Rough Rider Sand Scorcher or Super Champ the Super Champ was always the expensive one um, that was all expensive, but the Super Champ was out of the budget of my parents, and out of all the cars, I suppose the Volkswagen is the one I asked for. It was in a catalogue, and because I recognised, I don't even know if the others were in there. I must admit, I probably didn't know about it, I, 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 other than you know reading about it or um, the Tamiya guidebook at the time. I think I had, which had had them in there. So basically, the Volkswagen was the the picture I saw initially, and that's the way my mind was set. And I asked for that for Christmas, and I and I was lucky enough to get that for Christmas. So over the time, then Tamiya brought out, you know, they started this uh, chain reaction, if you like, with lots of kits coming out. Now one of them was the Grasshopper. Now I was aware it came out, but I was never a great fan. And like I've said, I'm still not. However, the advancement, although it was cheaper, it had lots of bits and pieces that the Sand Scorcher didn't have. For example, it had a gear diff. Um, it was a solid um, axle in the SRB cars. Um, I wouldn't have been aware, even if there was back then, but I wasn't aware of any upgrades or... Um, ball diffs or whatever it was at the time all I know is both wheels turned together on my sand sculpture and on um, the grasshopper and the hornet they worked like a diff so the grasshopper was far more advanced if you like and its natural um, design was hopping across the grass uh, I didn't particularly like it only and I think the main reason was it wasn't really a car it was just a, a buggy and I wasn't that keen on the look of a buggy back then I preferred the saloon look um, the super champ did appeal because it was an American designed buggy so to cut a long story sh even shorter hopefully yes i've changed i was getting hot um we're going to well i've got one of these and 
the consensus online is keep it as it is because it's fun. And there's lots of people that say there's no point spending money on it because it, it won't handle the extra performance. It won't do this. It won't do that. They are, there are even, loads of hop-ups that you can, I'm going to put this, waste your money on on the grasshopper. Which is exactly what I'm going to do. I've got probably off the top of my head. Oh, I don't know. About £250 worth of hop-ups. And I haven't stopped buying them yet. Um, I'm going to put on this. Now, it's been done. I have seen, like, for some reason, I've seen over YouTube lots and lots and lots of grasshopper videos lately even though I haven't done one or or searched for it even so this video series will be about I don't know how long I would say about five episodes which will include uh, the running video now I've got a lot of videos which are due to be run. And the reason I haven't run anything is the weather in the UK at the sort of the beginning of the year, the first three months at the least, sometimes longer, isn't that good. You get so many days which are literally a washout. And I don't really run my cars. Well, I don't run them in the wet. I don't tend to take them out and it's freezing cold, so I can't be bothered. Because most of mine are nitro. And starting nitros in the cold is... Well, it can be done. You know, lots of people do it, but I don't. So, um, and I like the sort of the nice, mild, sunny weather when I take my cars out, so it's not wet. So the plan is five episodes of the build, the upgrades, documenting everything, uh, a bit of a detailed build, all the way up to where we run it. And it's not to see how fast I can get it going. Is it's more of a case of is it better because you spend money on it or, or is it is it a waste of time and that's what we uh, that's what i and you plan to find out so without further ado sit back and enjoy the first of five of my grasshopper wasting my money on hop up build well here we are so um part one of However many I need to do, actually. Probably, it won't take that long. Uh, I'll say that, but it's time for me personally at the minute. But part one of, we'll say five. I'm going to start this build of my least desirable purchase. But there's a reason for my madness. This, as I said in the intro, this has created a lot of RC fans um, over the years, and it's probably instigated, uh, maybe not this particular model for me personally, but certainly in my growing up years, I would say this is, it was iconic because I remember it as a child, and like I said, I never wanted one. I do not want a grasshopper, ever. Here is one, um, and I've been reading a lot of. There's been a lot of grasshopper videos out actually, and the main reason for me getting one of these is to do exactly what everyone doesn't do: leave it as it is. They say keep it standard, use it for what it is. It's iconic, 380 motor or whatever it is. Hopping around, bouncing around, rubbish suspension, basic. However, got a lot of people into the hobby. But we're not going to do doing that, are we? As you probably found out within my intro, we're going to absolutely throw things at it. <clears throat> so far, um, my heat has gone off. So far, some bits in the box, and I've got a lot of bits here. It's probably 
at the minute over two hundred and fifty pounds I've spent. <laughs> this only cost me eighty five quid. It comes without the ESE because, as you probably can find out, we are not putting the kit motor in it. <laughs> we're gonna go. We're gonna go up. So I'm gonna get myself sorted out. Uh, although the build won't take long, I'll try and do a bit of a detailed build. Um, but let me um, let me get myself sorted, then I'll be back. By the way, I use these to heat up my shed. It's a bit, well, it's 10 degrees in here. It's not cold, cold, but it's. I think it's just. It's just on the edge of. It's too cold. <laughs> I suppose if I'm working it'll be alright, but I'm going to just heat it up a little bit. I've got to just, I've got to sort this out, so bear with me. Right, we're all set up. The heating's on, 10 degrees. That'll do for now. It's pissing down, as usual, but anyway. Now there's not much to this. There's actually more hop-up than there is kit, <laughs> I think. So we've got the instructions. There's some bits that we will be using clearly, which would be obviously the, the gearbox, uh, the suspension arms maybe. I'm hoping this all fits. This is all going to be a bit of a suck it and see. And we've got the parts box. There's not. There's actually. There's nothing in here. The gears obviously we'll be using. The hardware. Um, I haven't actually got any of this out. I should have got this out. We've got the bump. I won't be using that. Because I've got like a hop up version of it. So you've got the gears, uh, we might use those springs, there's some hardware bags, bag D, bag C. I've got some pots here. We've got the motor, definitely won't be using that. I've got bearings, I'm not using them, but I'm a bit concerned about that brass one. So, I don't know if I've got you got that one. Some more hardware. More hardware. Um, all the bits and pieces there, tools, and the gears. So, put that there. Now, I know many of you um, have, built, have built probably hundreds of these. And looking at the instructions and uh, there's not much to it actually <laughs> but anyway anywho um, it's not going to be a detailed build just for the fact of the purpose of this is just to see how much money I can waste hopping it up literally and then probably realizing that it doesn't work properly but anyway first things first is the gearbox assembly now with that as I frantically search through my bits and pieces here Hmm, there's some bits that I can't see. Just bear with me. You're probably going to see most of this anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yes, an aluminum chassis. Probably completely overkill, if I'm honest. Got so much stuff, I don't know what I'm doing. So we've got plague. Oh, it is in there. It's all right. Plague bearings, so we need them straight away. Let's put all this back. Lots of extra speed stuff. Lots of unnecessary hop-ups, you're thinking. You've probably seen most of it now, because you can see whilst well, I'm dragging it out. Um, not sure, I thought what was in there. Oh, I think it was in there actually not actually looked at what I've got, so... Uh, put these back in there. Try 
try not to lose everything. Right, here we go. <coughs> so the first thing's the gears, bearings, um, and fitting of all the sort of the internal parts of the gearbox. I'm going to get everything that I need out on the deck, and then I'll uh, I'll be back when I've got something to show you. If you watch my channel, you'll see um, that taking things off the trees, I don't like all those bits left afterwards. I don't understand why people won't trim them properly, even, you know, you could probably build this in a couple of hours, if I'm honest, quite easily. I probably won't. Um, but building it properly is important. But it's important to me anyway. <clears throat> okay, so now we've got to dig out the Well there's some gears somewhere, they're here I think. Is it that one? And we've got like we've got some gears, we've got a prop. We got a couple of uh where are these bag B so I'm gonna So we've done that struggle to find that a little bit. God knows what I was doing. Anyway. These are ceramic bearings. So pretty good quality, all the way from Australia. Just looking at these, even without, you know, there's no grease. I mean, they're, it's ridiculous. So ceramic bearings certainly make it, even those normal bull race, make a massive difference. Well, I think they do anyway. Okay, so. Now 13 degrees in here, so my little heat is working lovely. This is the second hop up. Can you see that? It's just the oil filler cap. Uh, the one you get in the kit's plastic. And this is just something a bit more, you know, posh, if you like. Does it focus? Can you see that? I don't know if that's focusing, if it's making I'm focusing on my hand rather than that, but anyway. Oil filler. That goes on to the other side. So let me uh let's get all this off. all the sprue cleaned up. Lovely. <clears throat> As with building Tamiya kits, your Tamiya crosshead, your JIS fitment, a Phillips, normal crosshead Phillips will fit, but it's, if you get the proper tool, it makes life a lot easier. Another thing, when you're building any Tamiya kits, even when the plastics are okay, is not to over tighten them. Just to stop that bit rattling, but nothing more. There you go. Oh, as it splits over time, but. Uh, there you go. I've got black. And, and chrome because that's pretty much what the car will be um, 
that's where you'd fill the gearbox with oil on that bit. That's the other half. Uh, I've now got to build the main diff, if you can call it that, a geared diff. When I build my diffs, I, I tend not to use the Tamiya stuff, no real reason. <coughs> um, other than, I've, I've had no problems with this, I just use like this, this came from China, funny enough, but it's just, it's just lube. But I find it, it just works a little bit better on the gears. And these, these don't get bashed around anyway, so. Um, this bit can be a little bit messy now, so. So, you could probably build this bit in about 15, 20 minutes. <laughs> it's taken me, well, ages, but I'd like to take my time. I'd like to enjoy the build. There's obviously another bit there as well. And there's a spindle which I haven't found. I will say it's where Tammy and miss a trick. You build a diff, for example, and it's in like three different bags. Where Kyosho, it's all in a bag. So you build bag one, the diff, and it's all in there. Um, but hey, that's probably why we love Tammy, I guess. And these are really, really tiny. It's the world's smallest part. There, can you see that? I can barely see it myself, and I'm here. Don't lose bag A bits. We'll all we'll be like I said. We'll all be dead. Where does that go? That's the gearbox. Well, pressed together. I've got to screw it together. It feels really like silky smooth. Let me just fit that together so I can let it go. And there it is. It is together. It's an open diff. Um, <clears throat> I can put some thick diff. I don't know whether to do that. I was going to put some really thick diff oil in there. Because if it spins one wheel up, it's going to do absolutely nothing, isn't it? The diff done, I can actually, what I might do, in fact what I should have done is sealed that, because I can just fill the diff up through there for now, through the sort of the motor with some thick oil, diff oil, uh, and it is pretty smooth. And I can always put the diff oil in there. I don't, I don't think it will leak. We'll see. But anyway, that's that bit done. So the next bit's putting the motor in. Um, I haven't got a motor yet. So it's got a motor mount. I might have to look because the motor mount here is plastic which is that one there hmm I didn't think of that but We'll put that on, I think. Let's put that on. Right, so... If you've been... Watching this episode with the, um, the grasshopper, you can see I've, I've built... The sort of the transaxle... What's this called? Gearbox? Transaxle? 
I don't know. But it feels really, really good. However, we're not going to be using it. To this, completely, <laughs> what are you doing? What am I doing? So that's the original, and this is made by RC Pieces. If I think of it, I'm rubbish at this bit. If I put it in the description, I'll put a link, but just search RC Pieces. That is really bright. I think it's reflecting off my everything. But aluminium, it's got bearings in it. So I'm going to have to take those out. I don't know what's inside. It also comes with a few other bits and pieces, like obviously a separate pivot. You know, the bit that's all moulded on this, this bit, well that's separate. It comes with an engine mount, a different engine mount, another engine mount here. And obviously these hex things, now I don't need them because I've got like, well don't no, not hex, they're the, sort of the original, but, uh, what are they, um, billet aluminium, I suppose that is, that's why they cost a bit of money. But what I have got is the hexes. Now what I need to do, I've just put all this there, lovely, I've got that nice little oil filler cap and it's all nice, lovely, as the rain lashes down in the UK yet again. This has got like a little oil cap there that just screws in, so this one's not going to fit anyway, the, this one here, so I don't know what to do with it. And you're probably thinking, you've gone and bought a um, grasshopper kit and you're not using any of it. Well, no, I'm not. <laughs> the most expensive way to build a grasshopper. Obviously, the most the opposite way that you should purchase a grasshopper. Cheap, cheerful, entry-level, infamous, famous, iconic, totally ridiculous amount of hop-ups for something that isn't going to work anyway. Anyway, that's what some of you might think. Right, okay, let me... Um, what am I doing now? I'm going to have to... God, it's cold in here today. I mean, five degrees. It's probably not as cold as some of you, but for me, I'm only in a little thin top. I just want to sit here and get warm and it waiting for my heater to warm the place up. Anyway, uh, I need to change the zoom on that a little bit because I need to work from this bit here. Right, I'm going to take this apart and... Yeah, I've got, to, I've got to transfer all the gears that I put nicely in here, that are lovely, and the bearings, into this. Um, it is quite a bit different, actually, looking at it. it like, it's got, like, those mounts on there, look. They're the shock mounts, aren't they? And those ones are... They're kind of there, aren't they? That's where you mount the shocks in the kit, if you can call them shocks, but, there you go, RC pieces, they lost the original, well not they, Royal Mail lost one of these, I was waiting like five, six days, nothing, they sent the other one, next day, they're not cheap, uh, 75 quid, it's more than the kit isn't it, <laughs> that is nearly most of that kit there, that was 85 pound, <laughs> It includes everything, and that was 75. That's probably about 95 dollars. <laughs> don't don't take a note of what I'm doing because it isn't going to work. I'm doing this because I want to do it. That's the only real reason. Right, let me. Um, I'm going to take this apart and change the camera. How long have I got? I haven't got long. It's half eight. Yeah, half an hour maybe. Four five minutes. Using the sort of new tools here, I bought these for uh, my the BRC. What was I, what was I trying to say? I'm trying to make these words up now. Um, I was going to do like an event, uh, the BRCA event for my um, LMP12, and I just wanted some nice new like tools. But I never went for various reasons. I was going to do a video on that, but I forgot. But the reason I didn't go wasn't actually my fault. Anyway, that's screws in both ways. That's uh, I didn't notice that. Well, that's nice. 
the good thing is on here I'm hoping you can see this my uh, my light is crap today so I didn't realize that but these these separate things here were actually bolted in separately you see that so that's that's really good and it's got <coughs> two bearings already there the light is absolutely shocking what is happening it's to do with this it's all glistening so I've got to try and get these out without damaging them because I want to put the ceramic bearings in and then this all got, goes back together. So they're very, very light. And anyway, they do fall out. There we go. Right. These are sealed as well. These are probably really good bones. And maybe they're, maybe these are ceramic. Perhaps I didn't need to take them out. But it doesn't matter. I've got to take this off apart anyway. So, <clears throat> right. I'm going to take this apart and reassemble all the gears into this right and then then I'm going to be back as you'll see when I when this is built there's hardly anything that I'm using right so now we're going to put this bit on this is the pivot which goes on to the front which creates um, the bit on here this bit here. So, uh, <coughs> where do I put that? <coughs> Lovely. It's just that machined billet aluminium. Like I say, completely overkill. And there's some other bits I've got my eye on for for this, <laughs> which I haven't bought yet. Ooh becomes a bit too much doesn't it so this allows you um, to run like a third damper which I'm tempted to do um, we'll see hence why that's up that way um, the original part doesn't have well, it has the, the the lug, but it doesn't have anything to. You, you probably could fabricate something, but we might. I don't know. I mean, it's not going to be happening anytime soon, but it'd be easy just take apart and put back together. So I'm guessing that just goes in there like that. So let's. Now I should use Loctite, and you know me, pretty regret it, but I, I don't want to do it at the moment. Well, just in case I've got to like take things apart, I just I just don't know. That one's really tight, but I'm gonna have to just keep going with it now. I think that one's just sort of like not quite where it needs to be, but that's okay. A little bit more, maybe like that and like that. Probably doesn't need Loctite. <laughs> we'll strip it on there anyway. <clears throat> and there we have it. That's that. I like that. And there we have it. Like it's done, and it ain't. It's nowhere near done. So I think <clears throat> the bit I got up to was actually putting the motor on, and I haven't got a motor. Looks alright, doesn't it? So effectively that, <coughs> looking at that there, that, that, that fits onto this bit here, like that. And the other one goes on the other side. Well, it might go on. I think it depends. Because the motor actually has separate, separate mounts. Uh, 
So I've put it all together and they're only very lightly done up but that's the motor will go onto here and then you bolt that onto here with these, these two and it, it does adjust so it swings out so it will pivot round like this so you can put the bigger pinions on I guess with the speed so that's the kit that's what you get for 75 quid I think now um, back onto the destructions now um, which means fitting it to the chassis but that's not as straightforward as you might think <clears throat> so the next bit I'm going to do is the aluminium chassis I've got to put these uprights up we've also got these little what are they called on here so they're called I don't know what they're called but um, it's what slots into the chassis so they should fit hopefully to this there's a pivot bar here um, which goes through this some springs it's also I've also got like a anti roll bar which according to the destructions need to go on at this point so I'm gonna mess around with that but let's uh, First off, let's get these undone. So we're sort of building the most expensive, well, it probably isn't, but an unnecessarily expensive grasshopper. But it's fun. I suppose it gives you something to watch. So this series is going to be a, what I'm going to try and do is, although you won't know this, <laughs> but I'm going to tell you anyway, is try to complete it and then release the videos. So for me, it will be recording right forever. But for you, you'll get a weekly video of me building this. may or may not interest you. There is something loose but I can't work out what. That's the back. Oh it has a bar on it already look. So that's interesting. So why did I get a bar then? I mean, I've already got one. Or is that not the same thing? Oh it's these. What's loose? It's these attention so as well as putting this together I need to put this together the anti this is a well the anti roll bar for the rear it looks super complicated <laughs> it probably isn't but certainly as far as I'm concerned at this point, time is not of essence. So I need to, for me, break off of that now for time purposes only. And then I will be back at some point to continue. The rear anti roll bar isn't going to fit because. It's got these like notches in the fixing points which go around the the webbing of that. So that means the rear anti roll bar is not suitable for this axle. So I need to figure out I mean I can put it on the old one when I'm and I build an a standard one up maybe, that's what I'll probably do because I end up with so many bits anyway that's for me to work out, let me crack on with that 
and I'll be back with some updates. Okay, we've got the chassis partly assembled with the back on. Um, <clears throat> I've got a anti-roll bar here, and I think I mentioned it just previously. Um, this can only be used with the old gearbox, which is, you know, you're pretty thinking that's what you should have done. So, but I might make up another because most of the um, another rolling chassis because most of the bits I'm using. <coughs> what's the point of buying a grasshopper kit if you're not going to use it? Um, hmm. Anyway, we'll, we'll cross that bridge as and when. Now it's on there. So I won't run an anti-roll bar. It's got this sort of floating rear axle on the spring thing, and this is where it'll kind of uh, like pivot like this, isn't it? Because it's clearly going to go down like this and pivot round like that. So we've got that on there. Um, I've had to put some spaces on there, look, uh, because more hop-ups, more stuff that probably won't fit. Right, um, let's, let me see if this goes on. And finally, we've got it on. It was, that wasn't easy. Um, I'm still not sure if that's correct, but it all lines up, which it didn't before. It was all over the shot, so especially that it's more the joint there. Um, I don't think it's still. I think it's put, but it is Chinese. Remember, so right. That take that took about twenty minutes. <coughs> I'm gonna put the other one on now, and they're both done. Mm, they fit all right. They probably still don't fit as well as the stock versions, if I'm honest. But look all right. So they're done. Let's see what's on the next page. Right, I'm going to back up a minute. I've missed loads out. It's because I haven't got any instructions at all. Clearly, the, the, the sort of the hopper, the grasshopper rear braces I didn't put on. I don't know what I was thinking. Just didn't. I just overlooked it completely. So I didn't need the washers. Um. I'm going to have to look up, because I've got no instructions. There's loads of stuff here which I haven't put on yet. So after... finding the instructions, which are there... Oh, I've been guessing. Anyway, we've got... It's partly built. It's taken, a long, taken longer than it should have got to got to this bit, but... <clears throat> um, yeah, I've got it's. I think it's on, it is on there, so you can see. It feels alright. It feels really good actually. There's tons of bits I got that I didn't realise I had. Um, but you know, as I'm pointing, you can't see it. The grasshopper is the pinnacle of retro. Are seeing and flipping it right. So I want to call that for me for now. Oh, stop it rolling down there. Right there we go. Everything is everywhere at the minute until I've sorted out. But we're slowly getting there. So I'm going to carry on with the back end. Won't take that long now because I know what I'm doing, and then I'll and then I'm going to be back. I'm going to be back uh, with some probably the front shots. To be honest, depends what the instructions say. Um, yeah, we're still doing on the real instructions. We're still doing the the back shot. So, right. <laughs> this is. I don't know how this didn't take me for years to edit. Anyway, anyway, that's it. Let me um I'll crack on, I'll be back in a minute. Anybody know what they're for? 
as in the springs, not these parts. I don't know, I've put a spring in there. Um, I think they're for the anti roll bar, aren't they? Uh, I'm not too sure. Uh, but, yeah, if you know, I, I can't. They are on the. I'm struggling to f understand what they're for. Um, is it like an extra? Sp I don't know. Is it an extra spring or something for that? Like the springs are in, but they're not sitting where I think they should sit. I uh, they just want to just ping off. Unless they're not suited, these are the same. But and I've tried on both sides. I think what I might do is <clears throat> put some. I don't know. I haven't got any hot glue, so maybe some sealer, silicon sealer. But I put those in. Uh, you can't see anything. I don't want to oh, do anything at the minute because it's still. That'd be fine. So I did find out what they were in the end. I tell you what, it's, it's, it'd probably be much easier building a standard grasshopper. Well, it is. And I haven't finished buying stuff for this yet. <clears throat> um, Right, so that's that's that. I'm going to fit the standard server mounts at the moment. So I haven't got any upgrades just yet. Servo posts on well, these ones um, doesn't mean I'm going to use them. I didn't. I haven't got any hop ups for those yet. Um, What's next? This is servos and things, we ain't got them, so haven't really got to worry about that at the moment. All the steering. The other bit I was going to buy, which I haven't yet, is aluminum front wishbones which would make sense based on what I've done uh, but I haven't got them yet so I'm, I'm going to put the standard black black ones on for now when this is done effectively I'm going to be left with a complete grasshopper Le less a few bits and pieces I think what I might do is well make a rolling chassis out of standard grasshopper bits that would be the plan and maybe I don't know maybe compare the two might be worth a, another video or something <coughs> right let's clean these up Another upgrade, which might not fit <laughs> the um, stub axles, uprights. Again, aluminium, so it's a shame to keep the plastic wishbones on there, isn't it? Um, but I haven't got around to ordering them yet, if I'm honest. So like that. There you go. Quite nice. Well, as you'd expect. Kingpins. Wishbones done. For now. Um, at this point, it's the shocks, the front shocks. 
they feel all right. I think I might leave them for now. I was thinking of putting like white grease in there, but yeah, we'll be okay with those. Front shock's done. They feel all right. There's still quite a bit more to do. It's a bit of an, I must say, a bit awkward to work on if you're building things after, <laughs> if that makes sense. Right, um, so I've got a front bumper to fit now. Somehow. More. More aluminum. Voila. It looks really good. I like that. That's pretty much pretty much done as far as I can go at the moment. Um, now this car I'm running hexes rear and front because I'm planning on putting different wheels and tyres on. Um, yeah. Well, I'll carry on doing that. Looks really good. I suppose the only downside it doesn't take a full nut on there, which is a little bit of a pain. But it's a very obviously a very open diff. That would be the plan. Stan. Just going to put this last little bit on. It's a back skid plate now. Just protect that aluminium chassis, uh, aluminium gearbox. Let's see how this fits on. Please God. Oh, I don't know how it does that, it bounces. And then, and then he's lost the black wheel nut. It hits that and just bounces like with immense force. Unbelievable. One little bit to do. So the back skid plate's now on. Just got to do a nut up. I can't get to the nut at the moment. It's a bit awkward. I have to think of a solution for that, like a thin socket. Um, sure about these wheels and tyres yet but anyway they don't fit which is a shame they would if the wheels are narrow so I'm have to get some like buggy front wheels and tyres I guess so that's not the end of the world um, so if you're those that are eagle-eyed amongst you would have realised I put the tyres on wrong. Uh, that's why it wasn't fitting. But so I've got these might not be the ones I use, but these are tight. I might have to get these um, maybe some different sort of wheels for the front. I'm going to put the steering um, steering arms on now, but these are not really what I would use because the problem is when I do the nut up it tightens, the, tightens it up too much um, 
So if I, if I nip them, it's solid. It doesn't move. You undo it so it's too loose to run, and then, it, then it's, it's free, but then it's, you can undo them with your fingers. Backs are okay. Yeah, it's a very loose diff anyway. But uh, yeah, I was actually putting the the wrong wheels on the wrong side. For some reason, I forgot they were like front and rear. But anyway, that's, it's done now. There. Um, I'm gonna do. Uh, I'm gonna do the steering arms. Um, yeah, I'm gonna make those up. Which is going back a few stages. There's a lot of play, and the <coughs> and the shocks are far too soft. Well, they're not too bad. It's not too bad actually. I thought it was going to be worse than that. So that's as far as I've currently got. Still got some work to do on the front here. Um, but, if you imagine what a, a normal uh, grasshopper would do. So if I just lift it up and drop it from there. Now the wheels are sort of pointing in different directions. But it's, it's not bad, is it? So I think I'll, I'll keep them. They're not as bad as I thought they'd be. And the back a bit more bouncy but with the electrics in there it'll be alright so what do you think at this point it's taking a long time to get here I'll tell you what it is and I do need to change these but uh, yeah I mean it's it is what it is You might be asking, what am I going to do with the nearly complete grasshopper? Um, well, I'm going to build up a standard grasshopper with some, as it should have been, with perhaps some uprated shocks, different ones. Uh, stand, I might have to buy some bits and pieces, bits I've used on this, which could be easily purchased. So, and then we'll have two. Um, I'm going to put electronics in both. And I'm going to do the same electronics, because I'm, you know, I can't bother to take them all out of one and put them in the other. Um, and we'll just see what, which one goes better, basically. It's going to have the same sort of stuff in there. Just to see if, because this is probably a little bit heavier than a plastic version. Um, but yeah. What do you think? What do you reckon on this? It's quite a bit of stuff that I haven't used, so... You know, I've got an anti-roll bar here, which will fit the old one. Um... don't necessarily need to use any bits here but you know there's all these sort of bits which came with other bits and pieces I bought anyway so uh, the rear anti roll bar there we've got the billet um, sort of shafts at the end for the wheels to fit on the original um, grasshopper wheels so we'll probably we'll just use up all the bits so there'll be two rolling chassis I'll just do one shell for now I if I'm getting two shells Unless I do, I don't know yet. Um, yeah, so I think thinking about it, this would be quite a long part one, if I'm honest. Right, I'm going to clear up. Look out for part two when we get this um, up and running. I quite enjoyed that. 
Um, it doesn't have to have those uh, aluminium wishbones on the front, but it would be helpful because I want to use these on the other one. I'm going gonna, gonna to do a bit of a clear up. This gets a bit messy when we do kits. And I'll, uh, I'll see you soon. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.